Uh, hi everyone, welcome back. Um, we are back on the boat. It's now December. We just had that big name storm pass over us, Arwen or whatever it was called, something ridiculous. Um, so I've come down just to uh, do a few jobs and check the lines, make sure that everything is safe and secure, and thankfully it is. Um, I'm just turning the engines over. They've worked fine first time. Um, so everything's good. We've had no water leaks or anything, and everything's fine. Um, but this is just a short video today. Uh, one of the uh, one of the viewers asked if I could um, give them a closer look at the Microtik Wi-Fi router that I use on board. Um, I thought I'd do that, and I'd probably explain why I picked this as opposed to one of the many domestic solutions that are out there. Because there are, I don't know, probably a thousand different versions of or ways of putting Wi-Fi on a boat or any moving vehicle. Um, so I suppose the important thing here to know is my background. I am a software developer uh, by training and I know quite a lot about networking and uh, tech in general was part of my role. Um, so when I was looking for something to put on the boat, there was a few things that I needed to consider or I wanted to consider, which ruled out other solutions. Um, so other solutions that you can get are things like the MiFi or MiFi, however you want to pronounce it, or like a Vodafone hotspot or anything like that. Uh, and they just plug into the 240 on the boat and they'll run at 240 um, all day long until you disconnect from 240 and you actually go out, you know, using the boat, in which case your Wi-Fi stops. Um, not always ideal because particularly if you've got like uh, chart plots and everything that need uh, Wi-Fi to get updates on sea states and weather etc you know um, you want to be connected somehow um, and most 4G networks these days will cover you know a good few miles offshore as well so you, you can actually get out and about and get some good signal um, so to me running on 240 was an option I wanted something that would run on lower voltage battery power basically um, which leaves me something that runs on 12 volt or something that runs on a few other options that are available. I'll go through them in a minute. Now, everything you can buy, even when it's domestic and runs off a, a wall warp, they are typically 9 to 12 volts um, for the actual running of, um, running of them, the powering of them. Now, the problem with that is that domestic power is very stable. Um, you don't get massive swings. So by that, I mean that if you run a you know, a little wall walk that steps down to 12 volt to power a MiFi device or whatever, for example, um, it will always give out 12 volt. It won't vary, it will, be, unless there's a blackout or brownout, you know, 99.9% .9 of the time it, it's 12 volt. Now, it's fine when you're at home and you're on mains or when you're in the marina and you're on mains, um, but in reality, well, most of us, some of us, take our boats out, which means that we are running on 12 volt batteries. It means that we are running on power generated via alternators. Alternators vary their charge rate based on the RPM of the engine and the load. So the flatter the batteries, the more load and the more amperage that the alternators put out, etc. What that means is that we don't get a solid 12 volt. Um, your voltage can vary from kind of 11, 11.2, 11.4, that kind of lower end, up to 14, 15. And I've seen six, like 16 volts quite often when the, everything's fully charged and you're on high RPM. So you need a device that can take that variance, and most domestic stuff can't. So even if you would say, right, well, I've got a MiFi unit, I don't need the wall water, I just need 12 volt, cut the wall water off, wiring a 12 volt feed to it. That would be fine whenever you're on household power, uh, or, um, you know, mains power. Um, but as soon as you actually go out on engines, your 12 volt varies. Now, if you remember back when I picked the TV, um, I was very careful with picking a 12 volt TV that is designed for mobile use as in variance in um, voltage and so the same came when I came to look at Wi-Fi I wanted something that could take a variance in voltage so if we look down here you can see that it is actually good for I'm assuming you can see that's 8 to 30 volts DC in so all I have to do is take a tap off the 12 volt circuit, run it to there, and then whether I'm charging on alternators, mains, or just on batteries, that will always work because it will go as low as 8 volts and as high as 30, which is more than our charging systems will ever put out. So, first issue 
you know, solved um, power. So at the moment, I've just got it plugged into a wall walk, funnily enough, um, because I've been, I've had it at home, I've been testing it, but if you pull this off, there's a couple of other things that I wanted. So I wanted the option to run multiple SIM cards. If you can see there, that purple thing, that is a three network SIM card. And underneath there is another SIM slot where I can put uh, another SIM card in. So normally there's a four, uh, not a four, uh, an EE SIM card in there. Um, and that means that I can have two networks and it will jump between the two networks depending on where I am because obviously when you're moving around the country or riverways, waterways, whatever, you don't always have a Vodafone signal, you don't always have three or whatever. So if I put two SIM cards in there, it will automatically switch. The other thing is, you can note from the power in, this is USB power and this is an RJ45 network based power. So if I could, if I wanted to, I could run that off a PoE injector or I could run that off a standard USB slot and a standard USB cable coming out of a wall wart or um, like my wall plugs and 240 volt have USB cables. Um, so I could run it on them. I could run it in a car if I wanted to. The other thing I want to do is these things do get quite hot, particularly when we're transmitting at speed and power. Touch the back of your phone after you've been playing a game or you know streaming a movie on it for a while, it gets hot. So what this has is this base, this little hex thing. This is just a big aluminium heatsink block. And it has these convenient little screw holes in. So all you do is up in its mounting hole, it goes in and it screws in. Okay, so that's the, that's the basics of why I picked it. Now, it gets more complicated than that, so bear with me. So this entire device is, I want to say it's IP65, water resistant. Um, but what we can do is, it has a built-in antenna as well. So you can put it out there in the arch, for example, so you can mount it up in the arch if you wanted to, which is where mine lives normally. Um, but what you can do is, you see that, LTE antenna and GPS antenna and a second LTE antenna. So what you can do is you can actually hardwire in antennas. So if you had one of those little uh, GPS antenna warts, 4G antenna warts, that's out on top of the arch, you could run that down to there. So no matter where this is, this is getting signal off a main antenna rather than a little one built into it. You can also hook it to GPS. Now, that's more interesting than you probably first imagine. So that kind of leads on to the next thing, and the next reason for why I picked this. Um, I'm a software developer, obviously. It means that I like to fiddle. Um, it also means that I work remotely from the office, particularly with COVID recently. And uh, I didn't want to be constantly tethering to my phone and then connecting VPNs and blah, blah, blah. So I wanted a few features that uh, a kind of domestic device like a MiFi or whatever doesn't have. Um, so let me just put that down and I will explain to you what I want. Here you go, you can look at that. So I wanted to run a site-to-site -site VPN from my house to the office permanently open as long as the Wi-Fi is on, permanently connected. So if I'm here with my laptop, all I do is I connect to this Wi-Fi hotspot and then I can access all the services in the office without having to um, make any changes or um, connect standalone VPNs separately, etc. All that kind of jazz. So the ability to permanently run site-to-site, -site, high encrypted site-to-site -site VPN networks was you know, kind of important to me. Uh, and I am aware that some domestic ones will do that, but not all of them. So, um, yeah, I wanted a bit more control, a bit more power. So this thing actually establishes two side-to-side -side VPNs whenever it's online, one out to uh, a private server cluster that I have for development and one to the main office for, for access to, to the teams and everything like that. So we have that. The other thing I wanted was I wanted something where I could traffic shape and limit and control who has access to it because a lot of the domestic grade stuff are very basic. So, you know, someone could war drive, it's called, um, your Wi-Fi hotspot quite easily. Um, with this, because it's slightly higher, it's not quite enterprise grade, but it, it's kind of SME grade. Um, and the Mikrotik router OS that runs on it is quite powerful, quite configurable. 
So what I've done is I've actually set up um, a certificate. So all the devices have to have certificates to join the, the Wi-Fi network. It's not just any old device can join the Wi-Fi with a password and username. You actually need proper certificates embedding as well, which proved interesting with the TV, but I worked out a solution for that. So, um, so yeah, it is doable. It's just it's a little bit more complicated. Um, but for a laptop and a, and a mobile device, that's absolutely fine. Now, the other thing I wanted was I wanted the ability to remote control it. So let me um, just get my phone out. So the Router OS has, by default, um, it has a um, web-based control panel. Um, but what it also has is, I don't know if you can see that. In fact, let me just turn the brightness right up. That might make it clearer for you. But what we also have is this, which is the Microtik, Microtik, or however you want to pronounce it, app. So when this is powered up and running, I can connect to it via the app and I can manage it and I can control routing, networking, firewalling, certificate generation, VPN endpoints, all that kind of jazz. And it, it's very powerful compared to um, a factory standard, even to the point where you can do hot failovers, you can set conditional failovers for uh, the SIM card when it should switch from one network to the other, or when it, if you have multiple routes out. So, for example, you have both SIM cards running at once and routing different traffic over different. So, you might send web traffic, for argument's sake, over the three three SIM card, and you might send out um, Netflix traffic, for argument's sake, over E. You can do all this kind of traffic shaping and routing if, if you want in it. Um, and you can manage it all via the mobile app. So it, it's pretty, pretty powerful in that aspect. Um, the kind of final thing that I wanted, which is really what appealed to me, and this was more of my, my developer curiosity than anything else, is it has obviously the, the mark for the GPS antenna, but it actually has built-in GPS. And Microtik provide um, a, a demo app to... Um, to be able to read that uh, GPS data and send that data off to a web server, uh, a web service within a web server to receive it. Now that gave me um, a very interesting idea. So if you are an anchor, uh, if you've got a fancy chart plotter and everything, what you might do is you might set up a, an anchor watch, a drift watch, and it'll warn you if you drift within a certain distance, um, etc. that kind of stuff. So instead what I did was I've written my own little app which runs on the runs on this little thing um, and all I do is I log into Sabin panel press go and give it a, a distance of how long I want it to uh, allow a radius arc so if you think you drop an anchor you put a 20 meter chain out then you've got a radius for argument's sake of, of 20 meters um, so what I did was I wrote a little app where you give it a radius and then it calculates an extra 20% of that. So if you do 20 meters, you know, you've got four meters of additional. If it detects your central point from where you drop the anchor, um, drifts via GPS more than four meters radius from where it is. So in other words, if, you, if your anchor's slipping, it will actually send me a push notification to my phone um, so that I can immediately know that I've got an issue now. Most of the time that's fine because you're on board and you're awake, but if we ever went and stopped at anchor at night, you'd want an anchor alarm on. Or if you ever dropped an anchor in a little bay and went ashore in a tender or anything like that, uh, you'd want to put an anchor alarm on as well if you were leaving the boat unattended. So yeah, um, some of the reasons, and it's basically, it, it's, it all comes down to, I like to fiddle and I wanted a little bit more than the domestic kind of products could provide. Plus, I wanted the, the stable power, the controllable power, um, which obviously the kind of domestic stuff can't give you this can. So, all in all, was it worth it? Well, in my case, yes, for a normal person. Mm, less, less sure. Um, you know, for you guys, I suppose it depends on what you want and how much you're willing to play or if, like me, you want to use the, the boat as almost a remote office um so yeah it's, it's up to you um the, the thing to remember is is that it's a cheap device as well because even though it's so powerful it, it's very cheap so that entire thing was uh, 89 quid uh, delivered 
Whereas I think the, the Mayfair one or the highway devices, stuff like that, um, they're about 150, 160 quid. So, yeah, I, I suppose it's up to you. But um, yeah, that's why I picked that. That's how I picked that. Um, and the only kind of further recommendation I say is if you are not confident setting up things like networks, Wi-Fi networks, um, if you don't understand things like SIM cards and how they connect to networks, I would probably avoid this because it's not really consumer friendly. Um, but if you've got a little bit, bit of knowledge in that area, you know, if, if you do work in tech, you probably have that knowledge. Uh, I would say give it a go. They're, they're cheap enough that you can test them and just see what you think of them. And uh, if you don't like it, you sell it on eBay for pretty much what you bought it. Um, so yeah, that, that's it. Um, that's my reasoning and uh, logic behind picking the micro tape router. Um, so I hope that's been useful for you. Um, if, if not, Sorry, but, you know, I can't always please everyone. Um, so, apart from that, take care, stay safe, and I'll, uh, I'll catch up with you all later. See you later. Bye-bye.